My secretary misplaced 12 student files. And secondly, we've got a new transfer student from a school that doesn't exist. And Andrew Edison, who I counseled 18 times in the last 18 days, has called to come to my office and ask to counsel me. Aren't you going to ask me how my day went? Oh, sure. How's your day go? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Not that it's anything earth-shattering, but uh, as of now, Kava has a new member of the basketball team. Oh, yeah? Where'd you find this one, San Quentin? Basketball tryouts. Oh. Fifty kids showed up, but one of them, Randy Judd. Yes, he is the most natural athlete you've ever seen. Another Dr. J, a wizard with the no, basketball. Not exactly, but he's only a freshman. I'll have him for four years. No, at least. Well, who knows? This kid could be a coach's dream. He's raw. He hasn't got a whole lot of natural talent, but uh, he's got a lot of desire. And he's coachable. See, anybody can coach a college and look good, but making a kid like this into a good ball player. Yeah, you it, sound like Dr. Frankenstein, you know that? I knew you wouldn't understand. What do you think 
think you're doing? Milking the ball like you said? No, milking the ball is not a freeze. Salami, will you please tell Coolidge what we do when we're all alone under the basket with the ball when we're milking the ball? I didn't know what you just said. Thor, what do we do? We shoot. Thank you. <laughs> milking the ball is not a freeze. Milking the ball goes to delay, and delay goes to freeze. Sounds like a recipe for ice cream. You got that? Yeah, I got it. I had it all along. Oh, then why didn't you shoot? Oh, he was waiting for divine inspiration. Coach Reeves? Yeah, just hold it right there for a minute. Just tell me that, Coach. If you knew it all along, why didn't you shoot the ball? Because I have cramps. You... <laughs> what cramps? I think I have appendicitis. <laughs> Where does it hurt? Right in here. Coolidge. Your appendix is on the right side. Well, it really did. See, Coolidge is a very delicate monster. <clears throat> cool, I think you got more things wrong with you than a used car. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I had cramps. Stay with it, Warren. The great ones play in pain. Now try it again. This time, don't let the milk turn to butter. Hey, who's the dude? That's the new guy on the team. You don't look good. You haven't even seen him play. I see his look. His look ain't good. My mother won't sign the permission slip. Why not? She doesn't want me to play basketball. How come? She's afraid I'll get hurt. Now you get hurt crossing the street, uh, walking down the stairs, driving a car, on a bus, eating chicken. She lets you eat chicken, doesn't she? I don't believe this. What am I going to do? Yeah, well, all right, all right. Don't worry about it. We'll work something out. All right, knock it off, you guys. That's enough for today. Uh, should we run laps? It's better than running numbers, Reese. <laughs> Next time, have the right change. Yeah, well, sorry about that. basketball at Parma High. Oh, yes, yes. Please, come in. Thank you. Well, this is Mr. Reeves. How do you do? Hello. You're the basketball coach. Yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. May I offer you some iced tea? Oh, uh, no thanks. Randy speaks very highly of you. Or rather, very highly of your opinion of him. Yes, he's asked us to call him Dr. J. I understand that has a special significance. Uh, Randy tells me you refused to sign a permission slip allowing him to play on the basketball team. Randy is uh, a serious boy. What does that have to do with it? I believed, and I still do, that Randy is in school to learn, not to play. Yeah, but the two things can go together. Your son seems to enjoy the game of basketball, and he's got a lot of desire, a lot of heart, a lot of drive. We don't need any more basketball players. We need more doctors, more scientists, more legislators. Now, Randy may have the desire, as you put it, to play ball, but he's also a very gifted student, and as far as we're concerned, that's more important. I take it you speak for the both of you. My husband speaks for himself. Oh. Well, look, the two things don't exclude each other. I mean, there's no reason why playing on the basketball team should interfere with his studies. And I assure you, nobody ever lost an election because they were a basketball player. But I think that to deprive him of the chance of participating in a sport like that is unfair and very selfish. We appreciate your interest, but the issue is closed. Randy's not in school to learn to play games. Won't you give him this chance? Your interest is understandable, but it's entirely unnecessary. And I have to ask you to leave. Oh, okay. 
Just, just a moment, Mr. Reeves. Now, my wife uh, feels very strongly about this, as do you and Randy. Personally, I'm not much of a fan, but I find it very hard to share Randy's enthusiasm. But Randy's our only child, and we love him very much. We only want the best for him. Of course. And what's best for you and your team is not necessarily what's best for Randy. We're not talking about what's best for me and my team. We are talking about what's best for Randy, what it is that he wants. Well, our immediate goal for Randy is college. It's something that both he and we have already planned on. My wife is concerned that Randy may overextend himself and in the process his grades may fail. And I must admit that I share her fear. Okay, look, I'll make you a deal. If his grades slip so much as one point, he'll leave the team. But if we find out that he can handle both, then you'll allow him to play. All right then, Mr. Reeves, it's a deal. If the grades stay as they are now, Randy can stay with the team. Uh, you have to sign this. Coolidge, you're doing real good on the rebound, but I want to see you do it in one fluid motion in the air. I want you to try to get rid of the ball before you come back down, all right? Okay, let's do it again. Friends, take your hands off your hips. Put your hands on your hips in a basketball game. You're telling your opponent you're tired. If he knows you're tired, he's going to run you ragged. Take five. Thorpe. Get back. Thorpe, wake up. Let's go. Hey, come on, alcoholic Jeff. Hey. Hey, 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 Man, I was so tired, I felt like I went 15 rounds with Muhammad Ali. <laughs> My head hurts, I'm so tired. You'll, uh, get used to it.
ain't nosebleed. Did you catch any splinters, man? <laughs> What's the matter? My hand feels numb, like it fell asleep. Oh, you probably just sat on it on the bench. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Why don't you rub it down with some alcohol? All right. <laughs> All right, uh, clowns. Let's get the circus started, okay? Reese, what was with mugging the guy on the inbound pass? I got carried away. Talk. I want your attention right now. Drop the cards, turn around, and listen. You got carried away, huh? Next time, I'll carry you away. Come on, I'm only human. Yeah, well, don't flatter yourself. Uh, Jackson, yeah. how about you? What's with the French pastry, huh? French what? You know, the French pastry, the behind-the-back passes, between-the-leg dribbles, all of that carrying on. What's that about? Because that's my style. That's your style? You're going to be practicing a lot on the bench. We're here to play basketball, not open up a floor show. Now, we had trouble. Bringing the ball up against the press, so I want to work on that today. Haywood, you and Randy bring the ball up and save the dessert for the playground, okay? <clears throat> on defense, I want Gomez and Salami. Now put the screws on them. Salami, no tackle. You just put a lot of pressure on these guys. All right, let's go. This is defensive drill as well. Reese, I know you know how to do this. Don't be such an eager beaver, will you? All right, you got 10 seconds. Let's go. All right, look, look for each other. Come on, use Hayward, Randy. That's it. Come on, you're running out of time. Oh, oh all right. Good move. You gotta watch this kid go go. He faked you right out of his socks. All right, let's go again. Come on, come on. Come on, use each other. Come on, Hayward. I know you know how to dribble. Get it to Randy, will you? All right, way to get away. Man's got speed to burn. Yeah, he's also got a high hand. Because you're out of shape. Salami in for Judd. Take a tour of the gym ten times. Oh, wait, I'm really kind of tired. What do you mean to tell me it's going to kill you to run ten laps after 20 minutes on the court? Come on, let's go. All right, now remember, you got ten seconds to get it over mid court. Let's go. Come on. Pick those feet up. That's better. Now let's go again.
Look, it's been almost two hours. Have you reached Mr. and Mrs. Judd yet? You are? Uh, the boys' coach. I came in the ambulance. They told me you were unable to reach his parents. Whose parents? Randy Judd, the boy they wheeled into the emergency room two hours ago. Well, Mrs. Judd has been notified. Well, where is she? We only spoke to her a few moments ago. Well, what took you so long? Mrs. Judd was shopping. Mr. Judd is a bus driver. He was working. All right, do you have any word on Randy? No. Well, how the hell am I supposed to find out what's going on around here? Mr. Reeves, as soon as we have any information, we will let you know. Have Mr. and Mrs. Judd gotten here yet? Yes. Uh, no. They're on their way. Look, what the hell's going on around here? It's almost impossible to get any information out of you people. Doctor, this is the boy's basketball coach. He came in the ambulance. How's Randy? Well, we won't know for a while. I don't understand what happened. Everything seemed fine. All of a sudden, he just collapsed. Randy had an aneurysm. What is that, a heart attack? No, it's a, a dilation of an artery. You're going to have to speak plain. Well, an aneurysm is a, a ballooning out of an artery. And, uh, when, the, when the artery balloons out, it weakens its protective strength. If enough pressure is exerted on the artery, it bursts. Uh, Randy had an aneurysm in one of the major arteries of his brain, the, the middle cerebral artery. Well, is he going to be all right? Well, he suffered severe hemorrhaging. He's still in a coma. Is he going to live? I don't know. Oh, my God. Coach Reeves. Is Randy all right? Mr. Judd? Yes. I'm uh, Dr. Luria. Will um, you and Mrs. Judd please come with me? turn on the lights. I don't want to waste the taxpayer's money. It's a lot easier on the eyes. Hey, Just. You'd be surprised how much light there is in the dark. How'd you know I was here? I guess. Where else does an ex-basketball player go to work things out? You're in the wrong profession. Should have been a G-man. Talk to Randy's parents. How are they? As well as can be expected. I also spoke to Dr. Luria. And Randy? The same. The good doctor's concerned about you. About me? He's afraid you might feel responsible. And he wants you to understand what happened to Randy. A blood vessel and his brain gave way. There was nothing you could do? Look, everybody keeps telling me there's nothing I can do about it. Everybody is afraid of what I feel. I'll tell you what I feel, Jim. I feel lousy, okay? I feel guilty, I feel responsible. Apparently, these weaknesses in the arteries are acquired at birth. And how do you know that? Dr. Lutheran, it's a theory he says most doctors agree with. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. He hasn't even begun. He told me he was tired. I thought he was talking it. He told me he was tired, Jim, and I made him run extra laps. I wasn't... Thinking about Randy. I was thinking about me the whole time. I was thinking about how I could teach him, how I could create him. That's what I was thinking about. If it hadn't been for me, he wouldn't be out here playing. 
And if he hadn't been out here playing, this might not have happened. You're not responsible. <laughs> well, somebody's got to be responsible. He was examined by a physician before he was allowed to play on the team. Come on, come on. What kind of examination did he get? What? They checked his pulse, they uh, tapped his knees with a hammer for a while, looked down his throat, asked him if he ever had hepatitis. If this kid had bad arteries, why the hell didn't we know about it? The only way to test is to run dye into the arteries, run it up to the brain, and x-ray the entire body. Now, is this what we're supposed to do with everyone who wants to play high school sports? All I know is that all the basketball teams in the world aren't worth this. Now, if we could have prevented this, then, by God, we have a responsibility to do that, don't we? Yes, we do. Any word on Randy? It's, it's hard to handicap. Uh, they say it's touch and go. Have you spoken to his parents? Every time I pick up the phone, my hand becomes paralyzed. I can't dial the number. Why? I'm afraid to talk to them. Please, don't tell me it's not my responsibility. If one more person tells me I'm not responsible, I'm going to hang myself. Look, I hate to disappoint you, but um, I didn't come here to talk about you. That subject is, frankly, a little boring. There are, however, 12 kids who do concern me, Ken, who are affected by what happened to Randy. Now, I think under the circumstances, it's very important that things function as normally as possible. You know, you're about as subtle as a medicine ball. Hmm. Thank you. Salami just meant that it probably speeded it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. All right. Yeah, okay, uh, cool is your excuse for practice this afternoon. What a faker! Oh, go on, man. You get on my nerves. Uh, Coolidge, if you have a headache, why don't you see the nurse? Nurse? You should see a psychiatrist. Excuse me, yes. Randy Judd. Randy Judd. Right here. Hey. Oh, sir, flowers and candy are not allowed on this floor. Yeah, well. Sorry.
He was such a fine boy, my baby, and you killed him. You killed my son. What can you expect when you... You know, I never knew nobody who died before. Well, I remember when my grandmother died, but she was old. I saw a guy get shot once, but he didn't kick. It was just a lot of blood. Hey, man, I heard the news. You know the guy? Yeah, we all knew him. Well, I guarded him at practice. Man, you wouldn't catch me playing for Reeves. Why you say that? The guy dropped dead because he pushed him too hard. That's a lot of bull. Bull? He made the dude run laps when he was hurt. Man, you know, if I was bigger dope as you, I wouldn't open my mouth to advertise. Yeah? Well, that's the way it came down to me. Oh, I didn't push him any harder than he does us. He had bad veins, man. I'm just repeating what I heard. You know, this dummy's even got a wind-up key back there. Hey, man, I didn't say nothing about you. Yeah, well, let's keep it that way. You guys are nuts. Oh, face. You guys nuts. You ain't stupid. I was hoping I could talk with you and Mr. Judd for a moment. My husband is at home. He's out walking someplace. Well, maybe I should come back. No, you shouldn't. Look, Mrs. Judd, I want you to know how sorry I am about all this. If there's anything I can do for me as well as for you, name it, please. If it's forgiveness you're looking for, you can forget it. I hope this keeps you up nights, Mr. Reeves. I hope very much that this burdens you for the rest of your life. Ken, come on in. Sit down. How are you? All right. Good. Did you see the times right up on our last game? No. Well, you should read it. Best little half paragraph we've had in two years. Listen to what it says here. Carver High is beginning to look like a team that we'll all have to reckon with. It happens every year. Some kid dies from heat exhaustion or spinal cord, head injury. You read about it all the time. You just don't ever think it's actually going to have to do with you. Purely accidental without any malice or intent. Randy Judd. Randy Judd, Randy Judd. The funeral's tomorrow. I need some passes from you to let the team out of school. Hey, coach. Yeah? Got him I gotta pick up my car before the garage closes. Mind if I go with you? No, come on. What's on your mind? You know the guys get on my case because I'm always complaining about this and that. Yeah. Well, this thing that happened to Randy scares me. I mean, it hits real close to home. Well, you think you're gonna live forever, like death ain't real or something. So, you, you know, you fool around, not be serious, because you think you got all the time in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I played ball to do two days ago, and now he's gone. I don't know how to handle it. I'm afraid of dying, are you? Well, I think most everybody is. So how do you handle it? I try not to think about it. It's like when you know, really know that death is there. It's just not something you read about or see in the movies. It changes everything. It could have been me. Well, I never knew death was real until my mother died. Even then, I never really believed, you know, she was gone forever. I kept hoping or expecting she'd come back. Even now, sometimes. 
Yeah. I wish I could think of something more helpful to tell you, but the only advice I can give you is that I guess uh, we all know that we're all going to die someday, and I guess knowing that nobody's going to live forever sort of puts things in perspective. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it just reminds you of what's really important. Your family, your friends, people. I mean, we're all in the same boat, so if we don't look out for each other, nobody else is gonna. What you said? Yeah. That makes me feel better. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could be a little more help. But I'll tell you what, if uh, my car will start, and if they'll take cash, I'll give you a little home, all right? All right. Come in. You ready, Coach? Yeah. Man, cemeteries give me the creeps. Maybe we'll just leave you there. Over my dead body. <laughs> Real sharp sense of humor, Salami. Yeah, you got a cripple joke for us, too? All right, leave him alone. He's just whistling in the dark. Who's whistling? just an expression, Salami. It means when something scares us, we make a joke out of it. It kind of takes a sting away. Get it? Right, let's go. Andy Emmanuel Judd was cut down in the flower of his youth. I cannot say to you that his passing is a blessing, or that the good Lord in his infinite wisdom and divine mercy has seen fit to render unto Randy a better day. Yet I know this to be true. I cannot say this because I cannot tell you that which you know to be true in your heart. We were blessed to have Randy with us for even too short a time. And to this, we give thanks, dear Lord. We give thanks for having had the opportunity to give our love and to share our love freely with such a fine boy. And in his passing, we are humbly reminded that Love can only be given freely. It can never be possessed. Give us guidance, dear Lord, and give us strength. Take care of Randy. He will be missed by all of us who knew and loved him. Amen.
I'm sorry. Coach Reed. We had Randy for so short a time. We had so many dreams, so many plans. My expectations were so high. It makes everything very hard. I understand. I never knew Randy to be happier than when he made your team. I'm glad he had a chance to experience joy. It was a gift. Thank you. 